Hey, Scott Beckford here. In this training, I'm going to share with you how a rookie can get to 100,000 fast as humanly possible. Uh, we've had people go use this exact process and fund, find and fund their first 10 mortgages in under 160 days. And that's from never doing mortgage before. Uh, check this out. If you want to find out more information about how we help rookies, go to rookie to rockstar.ca and we'll share with you um, how we help rookies find and fund their first 10 mortgages. All right, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the $100,000 flywheel and the fastest way that we have discovered to help you build a 100K a year uh, referral-based mortgage business. So um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about where the idea came from. I'm gonna show you some sample flywheels, including my own, and then I'm gonna break down exactly the, the five steps that you need to do in sequence um, and why it's actually not just five steps but so what is the plan I call it a plan like Bezos method this is a workshop that I run and I've had hundreds of people go through it and um, I'm just gonna but I'm giving you a version of this to just show you to make sense for where you're at right now in your business so uh, Jeff Bezos obviously the founder of um, Amazon and so he's got a great quote it says a good recipe is be stubborn on the vision and strategy and flexible with details and tactics and so a plan like Basil's simple business planning exercise that captures your vision, identifies the engine to accomplish that vision. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to give you the I'm giving you the plan. Instead of saying go build one yourself, I'm actually going to give it to you. And I would, normally when I do this coaching, I just tell people figure it out for yourself. And often they're not actually flywheels they are just sort of a mess. But in this case, because you guys are part of our brokerage, I'm actually giving you literally uh, the blueprint for how to do it. So where the idea came from was actually from a guy named uh, Jim Collins. And he did this book called Good to Great in the, I think it was like 2000s. And his whole thing was that why would some companies sort of take off and completely dominate their industries and others wouldn't? And one of the interesting things that Jim did was that he didn't just look at companies that succeeded. He found another parallel company that was basically the same because he did a ton of research on this. The big companies were running along totally the same. And then all of a sudden, one company just accelerated like crazy. And so then what he did was he said, okay, well, that's interesting. And you can see it because these are publicly traded companies. They started to interview the executives and they're like, okay, what's the one thing? What was the one thing that you did that, you know, was it a person you hired? Was it a new strategy, a new tactic? And in case after case, it was like, it was never just one thing. It was a series of really uh, smart actions that created a momentum that, that basically propelled the company from this sort of flat line to uh, amazing places. And so he had to come up with a framework or like a, a a model for explaining this is okay. It's not one thing, but it was a series of things. So we call it a flywheel. So he talks about in this book, Good to Great, and uh, of course Amazon. Uh, Jeff Bezos reads it. He says, this is fantastic. He he invites Jim to come to uh, teach this to his executives, and he so, and as smart people do when they find a good idea, they don't just like think, oh, this is a good idea. They apply it. So immediately Bezos is like, we need to create a flywheel for our business. So he comes, he does this little talk. And, and they created a flywheel that literally is still to this day the exact same flywheel. And so I have a flywheel for my business uh, and it's sitting on a sticky note. Literally, it fits on a sticky note. My entire business plan, I can make decisions rapidly quick just looking at the sticky note going, what should I do today? Oh, is it doing one of those things? Nope, then I don't need to do it. And it is incredibly powerful. And I joke with people like I've, I had a, a guy who's got a very large mortgage company. I'm like, hey, I can show you my business plan. He's like, no, you don't want to do that. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Like, because it's, but the thing is, is that it, what it does is it gives you a, a framework for knowing what things to do, what things not to do. So what exactly is a flywheel? So it, think of it as this really heavy, uh, you know, 5,000 pound wheel that as you start to push, it's really slow to get going. So you give it a push and it's like really, really, really push and it gets one spin. Then it gets a little bit easier and it goes to two and then four and then eight and it just starts to pick up momentum. That's what a flywheel is. As it starts, it starts to pick up momentum. And a lot of people have said to me, Scott, the mortgage business is a lot like, you know, rolling a stone up a hill. You have to push and push and push. And then all of a sudden you get over the top and you're like, oh my gosh, hold on. Then these people come to me in my academy like, Scott, I can't keep up. I'm drowning. We find them assistance. We've got processes in place. And it's because they put the time in to push that stone up the hill. Uh, but we're going to show you the, the quickest flywheel to get going. So the thing about a flywheel, though, is that it's not just a list of things to do. Uh, you know, it's not like, hey, you know, five things that would be great to do. What happens is each stage makes the next stage almost inevitable. So it's like, if you do this really well, then you can't help but this to happen. And if you do this really well, you can't help this to happen. So that's the key thing that most people miss. They just kind of pick five things that they like to do, four or five things, and that's not what works. And if you read, uh, he does another little a small book on this whole topic, and there's people that have used this same concept in you know, uh, nonprofits and schools, you can create a flywheel around anything. And now I think a business is the main flywheel is the, you know, the center of it. And then when you, you can also have like little mini, you know, wheels underneath those others that create almost like a clock. So if you think about like a clock that spins, so you got the main flywheel that spins and underneath it, the, you, the other things create momentum for each of those stages, which I'll show you in a sec. So 
And it, as I said, it's not list the, it's simply a list of things that are good to do. So let me explain to you the Amazon flywheel and I'll explain my flywheel. And then I'm gonna explain the flywheel that you're gonna apply uh, for the first year in your mortgage business. And you're gonna just, you're gonna live, this is gonna be burned into your brain for the next 100 days. Cause this is the, the simplest way for you to get there. Okay, so here's the Amazon flywheel. So they, they're at the center of their flywheel is client obsession. Like we wanna build, you know, we wanna have be obsessed with our clients. Okay, so what are, our first priority is lower price on more offerings. Okay, so if we do that, right, you almost can't help to but increase customer visits, right? Because low prices, attract people, increase customer visits. Then they decided, hey, if we want to expand that more, why don't we attract third-party sellers? So one of the things that Amazon did before anybody else would even thought this was a good idea or even did it was they said, hey, look, we'll compete with ourselves. Well, you want to sell your stuff to our people? We don't care. Put them on our site. Uh, put your stuff on there because what is attracting more third-party sellers does what? Increases more site visits. So then the store starts to expand. So now there's more options. So Amazon carried a small, keep in mind they were a book company and now they're into they're the everything store. But so they started as a book company and slowly, and the cool part about this, so, you know, Toys R Us kind of made a mistake with letting Amazon run the back end of their, they, they know what stuff's selling. So, you know, this is what they say, you don't compete with Amazon. When they see a product that's doing well, they're going to have it and then they're going to crush you with it, right? So because they under, they have the infrastructure, they have the warehouse, they know what stuff's being sold. Um, and, you know, so I have, no, I have friends, and Ryan being one of them, he used to have an Amazon business at one time, but uh, but I digress. So uh, in any case, if you low prices, then increase customer visits, and then you attract third-party sellers because third-party sellers are like, hey, I want to get in front of your customers, no problem. Your store expands. Then what happens? You increase efficiency and reduce costs. So as you it, that expands, the same infrastructure cost doesn't go up. Um, which means what you can do, lower prices, which does what? Increase customer visits, which does what? Attract third party sellers, which does what? Your store expands. And so like Amazon Web Services, which is actually an incredibly profitable part of Amazon's business is um, is basically a, uh, they had to host all these servers. They got this massive website, like we need servers, man. Why don't we build our own? And then they said, well, we can actually sell this. So it actually fits under number five there. It would actually fit as part of that flywheel because it's actually also, it's it's not only is it, uh, increasing efficiency and cost, it's actually making them money. So it's making them money to do something they already want to do. And I love when they can do that. So I'll show you my flywheel and then I'm going to show you the flywheel that we're going to help have you install. So my whole thing is about client success. So we're all about like, okay, what's the simplest path to help people get up the mountain? They're trying to climb Everest. They don't want to spend two years at base camp. Uh, so what, what, you know, that's, that's what our success focus is. But so here's what I, I create engaging content. So through podcasts, primarily, although we're going to expand into YouTube, depending on when you watch this, we're going to be into YouTube and other, other platforms. Why do I do that? I want to increase downloads. Why do I want to increase downloads? Because it allows me to track coaches and mentors, which, which we have done, um, which then allows me to do what? Expand training and support. I bring people in that have skills that I don't have. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. You know how to do this. This is fantastic. I have a bunch of people that could use learn how to do this. And then what we do is I collect client stories. And so when I think of collecting client stories, I'm thinking for successes that we love to share. Because if, if you listen to some podcasts, it's somebody did some great things. But if it's, if it's not a success, it could also be a challenge that we learn from and then we make our, our stuff better. So this is it. So if I create engaging content, I can't help but increase downloads. If I increase downloads, I can't help but attract coaches and mentors. I had a guy reach out to me, top 1% mortgage broker. Hey, can I come coach for you? I've heard great things. I'm like, I don't know, maybe. What you, show me what's your superpower. You know, um, then if I do that, I can't help but expand training and support because I don't have to come up with it at all, right? And if I do that and I collect the client stories from it, you know, the stories of successes and the challenges that we learn from, I can't help but create more engaging content. So as you can see, you know, when I first put this together, I was doing about 2000 downloads a week of our podcast. Currently, 10 months later, so 11 months later, we're now at 6,500. 6, so I focused on that. I'm like, okay, I'm dialed in on creating engaging content because what's happened, we've increased downloads. What's happened, we've attracted more coaches. I mean, we, have a, we have a lineup of people that want to join our academy. Um, some of you have come to us from this. Then expand training and support. So what you're in right now, the brokerage is actually just part of number four. When I think about this, I'm like, okay, so how do we best support you know, talking to collecting client stories, running into situations where we see, okay, we teach you how to sell, but if we don't teach you how to convert and fund, you're going to struggle. Hmm, how do we fix that? Oh, I know, let's create a brokerage. So in under number four, that's why we created a brokerage because it was like, hey, we've got to expand training and support, which then means go out and find a, a bunch of great team, which we've been doing and, and continue to do so that we can, we can deliver that. And then of course, as you know, we collect your stories. I don't know if you know this, but we literally, everything, we, we keep track of it. We want to, and a lot of it's just for our own internal, like, hey guys, we're moving the thing in the right direction. And we also though reach out and call you and where are you getting stuck? You know, this whole revamp that we did of the of my training into this 100 day challenge came from talking to you guys and collecting stories and saying, hey, what, where are you at? Oh, you're getting you're getting confused. You're getting off track. 
I'm like, I know we just need to, we need to make this thing like a rocket ship or it's literally step by step and you can't get lost. So that's why we did it that way. So here's your flywheel. So, and we're going to get into this more in upcoming calls. You're going to contact your network. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to show you the, the methods that you can use to contact. The purpose of contacting your network is to build a list of realtors, right? We, because realtors are the fastest way to get your business going. Then when you got the list of realtors, we're going to show you how to present to those realtors. We have something called our perfect realtor pitch, which has been absolutely killer at converting. You do that, you're going to generate referrals, right? If you contact your network, you can't help but, and if you do it the way we show, you can't help but build a list of realtors. You build a list of realtors and present to them, you can't help but generate referrals. And if you generate referrals and you do the method that we teach you with the, how to convert and fund, you're going to create raving fans, which is going to do what? It's going to grow your network, which will grow your list of realtors. And on it, and literally within a very short period of time, we will get your business rocking and rolling, but that's it. So if you want to write anything down, you want to take a screenshot of this, put this somewhere. This is, this is the plan. This is the game plan. You're going to see over the next hundred days, we're going to squeeze every possible opportunity out of that, uh, for you. And, and you're just going to, from there, it's, it's the number I said, rolling a stone up a hill. We found this, this, the quickest path up the hill with the stone. All right. So I had a little glitch there. Hopefully it came back. Okay. All right. So quick recap for you on this, um, how this is going to work. We're going to show you how to contact your network. We're going to give you a very specific script and plan for that. We're going to show you how to use your network to build your list of realtors because that list is going to be critical for you to get your business going. Then we're going to show you how to present to those realtors. Um, and when you have success, we're actually going to show you how to get more out of those network contacts. So you're, it, it, it's a virtuous circle. Uh, then we're going to show you how to generate referrals using Ryan's whole process. He's absolutely killer at conversion and generating re referrals. From that, you create raving fans, which will then expand your network. That's it. That's all we do. Five steps. And what you're going to be doing every single day is one of those five things. And uh, so that's it. So we'll be seeing you in the next video. Uh, write that down. We will be uh, talking to you really soon.